Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to use Flask Bubble, a very nice package to manage uh, the translations uh, on your website if you want to uh, publish a multilingual website. I've created a boilerplate of a translation agency website, which you can see now on the screen. Uh, with Tailwind CSS, HTML, and a little bit of uh, JavaScript. And as you can see, if I go to the language uh, switcher and I change the language, it changes the language for all my text snippets. It goes from uh, English to French and I can switch back to English. If I load my page, if I reload my page, it's by default in English. There are a few other elements which are also translated. So if I try to subscribe uh, to the newsletter without giving any email address, it will show me a pop-up, please enter a valid email address. If I switch to French and if I do the same, you see that uh, the text is in French. If I enter my email now, uh, like fred at mail.com and I subscribe, I've got the subscription confirmation in French. If I do the same, I would just copy uh, my email in English and I just paste my email. I've got the confirmation in English. It might seem trivial, a little detail, but it's not that easy to manage it as easily as you can do it with a, a Flask uh, Bubble. If you try to do this in WordPress uh, to make it right and also fast uh, uh, to translate uh, all the elements in your uh, website, uh, the JavaScript uh, components, uh, the text strings in the plugins, uh, the text strings uh, on uh, the HTML pages themselves. It's not that easy, but with Flask Bubble, it's super convenient. And I'm going to show you how to uh, set up Flask Bubble for your project. So let's open uh, Visual Studio. I've got a few files that uh, we will discover together. First of all, um, pay attention to the fact that I have a README file, which you will find uh, in the GitHub repo, which I will share uh, in uh, the description of this video. You can access uh, the repo and uh, clone the boilerplate. If I click on the README and if I uh, open the preview of the README, I give you all the details on how to install Flashbubble. Uh, with the uh, pip install, pip install flask uh, dash babble. Uh, then also I tell you which uh, directories you should create in your project to make this work. You have to create at the root of the project uh, translations directory. Under it, you will have a folder for each language and uh, you will have this fr for French folder with a subdirectory, a subfolder called lc underscore messages. This is where you will have uh, ultimately the messages.mo file, which is the file used uh, for uh, the management of the translations. And uh, the .po file, this is the file where you will see all the text strings that you will have to translate, but more about this uh, in a moment. So let's come back to the readme file. You also need a babble.cfg file at the root of your project. You can see here uh, that you will declare uh, the locations that you want um, Babel to pass to try to find text strings. So it will pass all uh, the templates in your templates uh, folder. It will also pass all your Python files to try to find text strings uh, that are um, eligible for translation there. Uh, then uh, when all of that is ready and when all also your files have been properly configured, and we will see that in a moment, uh, you can uh, run this command in your terminal to extract all the strings to a file which is called messages.pot, which you will find there uh, at the root uh, of your project. And then after you have messages.pot, uh, you will uh, initialize language translation files, which will be used by the translator. And I've initialized one for French because I have only one language uh, besides English in this demo. And the final part, when all the translations are done, you will have to compile um, the, .p, the .po file into a .mo file. So that's the final part of the process. And then your site will be ready, will be good to go. And the uh, translations will be automatically shown, displayed uh, when the user changes the, the language. So let's go into the details of the files themselves now. So we'll close this and this one. 
we will go to the index.html file first. Um, this is where you will have most of your strings, usually in the HTML file. You can already see that at the top of my HTML file, I've got this line for uh, the current locale, which will be determined by the language switcher or by the uh, automatic uh, recognition of the language when the page loads. So you need to have this line there. So that's the head section, nothing special there. And then you can see uh, in my uh, body, in my text, that each time I have a text string in English, it's surrounded by this underscore and then the parenthesis and then the text string and then a closing parenthesis. So this format. And this is the format that you will need for all your text strings in your HTML file. The first time you create uh, your HTML file, you won't have this, uh, this format. Uh, in your file. The best thing you can do to, um, to make it fast is ask uh, GitHub Copilot or ChatGPT in another window to refactor your code so that it's uh, compatible with the Flask Bubble. And then um, the, the AI assistant will understand automatically that they have to uh, refactor the code so that we have this structure for a text string. So the braces, then the underscore, the parentheses, the text string, and then the closing parentheses and uh, double braces. As you can see, it's the same for all my text strings in my file. And I have a, a special uh, detail also in the nav section. In the nav section, let's come back to uh, the demo. You see uh, that I have my uh, language uh, switcher there and also I, ha I have some button there, the login and the sign up. And we will see that they will also change dynamically depending on whether the user is logged in or not. But first, uh, let's focus on the language switcher here. Let's come back uh, to the code. Uh, you can see here that I've got my language uh, switcher and each time uh, I, uh, I change language, it will call a route set lang and it will uh, change uh, the, uh, the language argument there. And if I go to my, um, my Python file now, I've got this route slash set lang, and this is connected to my front end here. So it will change the language and then it will change the locally, which will change um, the text version in uh, the text strings that we have declared in the HTML. That's the way it is, uh, it is working. It's not working exactly the same way in the JavaScript file. In my JavaScript file, which is, for instance, taking care of uh, my uh, email uh, newsletter uh, button, I need uh, to uh, connect first to my backend and to see if I've got some uh, translations that I have uh, to fetch. So I've got a specific route for that in main.py, as you can see, slash uh, js underscore translations. And we have a few uh, text strings there. We have the logout text, the account text, uh, the success uh, title for uh, the success pop-up, the success text, and also uh, an error message. If the email is not valid, please enter a valid email address. And those text strings will be part ultimately of the messages.po file, which will be compiled as messages.mo file. But that's the way you have to create a connection between the backend and the JavaScript file so that uh, the JavaScript can use uh, dynamic uh, text strings for the translation. So if I come back to the JavaScript, you see that I first call this route. And then if I receive the data from uh, this route for the translations, I can check if the user is logged in. That's the next thing that I'm doing. I check if the user is logged in. I've got another route uh, for that, is logged in, uh, which we have, I think, uh, at the beginning of my file. Yes, is logged in. Theoretically, when you are in a production situation, uh, this will check whether the user is actually logged in using a Flask login, and then it will return uh, to the front end uh, uh, the true or false uh, statement. For the sake of this demo, I have hard coded the fact that the user is not logged in, so as you can see, it is false. And if I uh, change this into true, so let's do this and save the main.py file. We go back to the HTML and uh, I refresh it. And as you can see, the buttons have changed. We don't have the, the login sign up buttons anymore. They became the account and logout button. And in French, 
uh, mon compte, my account, and uh, disconnect uh, logout here. So the buttons were also dynamically changed depending on the status of the user. Is the user logged in or not? If we come back uh, to the code here, we can see that uh, uh, we have uh, a bunch of lines uh, which will uh, determine uh, how we display or not the button, the login and the sign up button, depending on whether the user is logged in or not. And if the user is logged in, then we dynamically create in the DOM a new button, uh, the account button, and we also uh, dynamically change uh, the text of uh, the login button in logout. And you can see here that uh, for the logout button, we get uh, from the initial call to uh, slash JS underscore translations, we get the logout text. For the account text is the same, we get it from translations. And then for uh, the event listener for the email subscription, we call uh, the route email underscore sign up. And if we uh, get a confirmation, we will also use the success title and the success text strings from the translations that we got from the backend to display them in a sweet alert uh, pop-up like this. And uh, if uh, we have uh, some error, if the validation of the email was not correct, was not confirmed, we also have a string of text valid email that we got from uh, the translations route there. So that's the way that you connect your JavaScript logic to a uh, Babel Flask via the backend by calling initially this route slash JS underscore translations. You can rename this route uh, the way uh, you want. It could have been called uh, slash uh, translations or slash JavaScript translations, for instance. So this is the route to check if a user is logged in. Uh, I hard coded it in true. Then here you've got a, a function to get the locale and this function will determine uh, what is the locale that we have to use uh, in the front end. Here it is uh, the route which is used by the language uh, switcher that we saw between uh, French and English. Uh, this is also important to uh, make uh, the system work with Jinja2, which is uh, uh, the protocol that we use uh, for uh, the front end. Here you can see that we have this underscore uh, logic rule, which tells actually our backend that anything preceded by an underscore in the front end will be a string that is eligible for a translation. And uh, here I just have the route uh, to open uh, my index.html. I've got my route that I use in my JavaScript to retrieve uh, a list uh, of text strings uh, and their translations. And here I've got a dummy email uh, sign up route. I uh, just uh, get the email uh, from uh, the JSON, but I don't do anything with it. I just print out the email uh, in Python. If you are in a real application for a real use case, you would here uh, register the email uh, in your database in a table like uh, users or uh, newsletter signups, uh, for instance. And uh, it returns true to the front end, which enables me to show this pop up with the confirmation of uh, the sign up. So, this is uh, the structure of uh, main.py. I showed you the structure of app.js and also the structure of index.html. So, to recap, in index.html, all the strings that are eligible for translations will be preceded by this underscore. They will be between parentheses, also surrounded by uh, those uh, double uh, braces. So that's the way the system will uh, uh, find uh, the strings that need uh, to be uh, translated by, uh, by Babel. I have also here the logic uh, for my language switcher, which is connected to this backend uh, route. And then in the JavaScript, I call this route from the backend to get uh, the translation uh, strings. And I will then use them inside of my uh, file like this translations dot and uh, the reference to uh, the string. So this was the demo on how to use uh, Flask Bubble in your uh, Flask project to manage your translations. It's very convenient, very easy to implement. And I can tell you that if you compare this to a WordPress setup, it's much more convenient, 
much faster. So I encourage you to test uh, Flask Babel. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I will do my best to answer them as soon as possible. And if you are interested in AI assisted coding, I've got a newsletter which you can find at uh, aicodingclub.com, aicodingclub.com. Every week I'm sharing boilerplates, code snippets, tips on how to use AI in your daily coding practice. So check out AICodingClub.com. Thanks for watching.